Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the continuation of horn and horns, symbolism in the Bible. In Psalms 92, verse 10, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And oil, olive oil in the Old Testament was uh, indicative and a foreshadow of the Holy Spirit. But did David have a horn growing out of his head? No. Symbolism, people. Symbolism. And what about a unicorn? You know what a unicorn is? Uh, well, if you look at the New Agers information, they'll tell you it's a horse with a horn coming out of its forehead. But if you look in the scientific community, there is what is called an Asian rhino, rhinoceros. Yeah. And its name is Unicornus. Unicorn is. Uh, I'm not sure if it's rhinoceros or rhinoceros. I don't know. You know, people have different ways of pronouncing things, but uh, but yeah, seriously, there's a there's an Asian rhino with one horn, uni, you know, uni, unified, one, you know, universe, one. And uh, when did a rhinoceros become a horse? You know, what, what, the Bible talks about the strength of a unicorn. Now, an African rhino has more than one horn. That's why it's not called unicornus. Just like you got a difference between an Asian and an African elephant. Do you know that in uh, places like Thailand, they revere elephants because they take them when they're young and they train them and they actually make beasts of burdens out of them. They teach them how to grab logs with their trunk and drag it along and, and do work. You know, in India, uh, they used to use elephants and put a uh, sort of like a horse's saddle but it was more like a, you could put two or three people up the top. It wasn't really a saddle, but uh, I don't know what you call it. But they could put a platform up there uh, with a roof and, you know, so that they could go hunting for tigers or whatever. Because even a tiger would have a hard time with an elephant. But uh, Asian tigers, man, they're... They're huge. They're huge. I mean, some of them weigh close to half a ton, um, from what I understand. That's uh, a thousand pounds for the, those of you that don't know what a ton is. Those of you in Europe, uh, you're talking about 450 kilos. That's a big kitty cat. What did Tweety Bird say? I thought I saw a putty cat. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did, I did see a putty cat. Yeah, two a thousand pounds. They's big. Um, but yeah, an Asian rhino. But the point I was making is an Asian elephant, you can train it. An African elephant will stomp you to death. They're, they're untrainable. But they're both elephants. You know, it's... It's amazing. I, I find it amazing, but yeah. So, all right. So now you know what a unicorn is. And if you don't believe me, type in unicornus, rhinoceros, or rhinoceros, however they pronounce it. Um, so, all right. We're going to go to the book of Daniel. And... Uh, Oh boy, I, I really hope that I can do a 
decent job of this. Uh, Daniel is, my opinion, the hardest book in the Bible. But Daniel was told to shut up the words, seal the book until the end. And I suspect that at the end of time, when all this starts being fulfilled, that the Lord will reveal his secrets to his people. And I hope I'm one of them. In Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, and I did a playlist on the minor prophets. Amos is considered a minor prophet because of the size of the books, not because of the importance of the message. And I know I've said that a hundred times, but we'll make it 101. Amos 3, 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And you got true prophets and you got false prophets like the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes, the world's going to end in 1975-76. They said, well, it didn't happen. So they're false prophets. Of course, they try. They do one or two things now. They uh, deny that they ever said that, and or they also say, "Well, you know, we were we were kind of wrong about that, but we got new light." Yeah, they got new light from the angel of light. Yeah, Satan's ministers are transformed into yeah, yeah, the angel of light transforms his ministers into yeah yeah I, I don't need their light which is darkness by the way so all right let's take a look at the book of daniel and we're looking at horns now this ties into the book of revelation and the problem with people is they look at pictures and then they got the wrong idea. Uh, it's like when they're talking about Genesis chapter 3 and Eve's talking to the serpent, Revelation 12. The Bible tells you that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Um, yeah. And they see a picture of a snake hanging from an apple tree. Uh, yeah. You get the wrong idea. Yeah. Eve was not talking to a a snake, a talking snake. No. No, it's symbolism, people. Eve was talking to the fallen angel, probably one of the, if not the most beautiful of God's creation. I mean, really, a shining angel. Very beautiful. You could read Isaiah and Ezekiel. I mean, Satan's not some dumb, ugly creature with horns and a pitchfork and, you know, a, a red dragon thingy. No. But that's, that's what they, uh, that's why they use pictures. Maybe that's why the Lord didn't like uh, images. You know, like what they call idols. Now, an idol generally was considered a uh, like a statue type thingy, but the uh, Eastern Orthodox Church uh, they have something that they call icons. Yeah, just like on your computer, that's where they get the the thing about icons. But icon basically means image, and it's tied in with the Hebrew word idol. You know, people look at a a picture of a mother with a halo over her head holding a child and oh that's mary with jesus you know i don't think so and sadly the eastern orthodox church is heavily into that stuff which is sad really but that's that's the way it is so uh, is there a perfect church? I on this earth, I, I if I if I ever found one and I joined it, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. But you know, 
they all have their problems. So, all right, so let's take a look at horns. Now, what I find interesting in the Bible is sometimes the Old Testament will explain the New Testament, and sometimes the New Testament will explain the Old Testament. So, all right, I'm going to take a look at something here, and I guess what I'll do is explain it as I go along. So, please turn your Bible, King James Bible, to Daniel chapter 7. Geneva Bible's okay too, people, so, you know. Yeah, I'm one of those King James people. You know what? Find find out what uh, Bible the world hates the most, and you'll know that that's the one to use. Yeah, the King James uh, crowd. Let me tell you something. They'll tell you that King James was a sodomite, and yet in the book of, I think it's Leviticus, uh, his Bible tells you what to do with them. And it's not, uh, it's not to give them scholarships to become elementary school teachers. A little hint there, yeah. Now, it tells you what to do uh, with them. Uh, yeah, they're, they're supposed to go to the, uh, uh, the cannabis dispensary and get stoned. Only there's no weed involved. Yeah. I'm, this is for the uh, you-know-who censors. Yeah. The Bible tells you what to do with them. And if James was a sodomite, um, he would not have allowed that into his Bible. Sort of like what the NIV did, because the NIV had at least two people of that persuasion. And uh, the original 1984 version of the NIV, you would have had a very difficult time. Well, you couldn't prove that um, that thing was a sin. You couldn't prove it. Impossible. Of course, they changed it a little bit when people started pointing this stuff out. The NIV has gone through, I think, three revisions, if memory serves me correctly. And, uh, yeah. So, all right. So, let's go Daniel 7. And by the way, the King James Bible will explain the King James Bible. The modern Bibles don't do that. They, You don't make the cross-reference. Uh, you don't make it. It's not there. They change words. So, I mean, it might say horn in one place and then shofar in another. And unless you knew, you know, and you don't make the connection. Yeah, a shofar is a horn. But, uh, you know, there's no consistency. Or they'll delete words. You know, of course, they'll claim that King James adds words. But uh, they'll delete words that uh, will cause you to think, hey, that's mentioned over in this old part, Old Testament part of the Bible. And then you'll make the connection and then it'll, it'll explain itself to you. But you can't do that with the modern Bibles. You can't do it. All right, so Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Now, I want you to know something. Belshazzar was Nebuchadnezzar's child, his son. And when you look at his name, how it's spelled, B-E-L-B-E-L-S-H-A-Z-Z-A-R, Bell is just an alternate spelling of Baal, B-A-A-L. Baal was just a generic word for Lord. Sometimes in the Bible it was applied to the creator of heaven and earth. Sometimes it was applied to Satan, depending on if you're a member of the Church of Satan or if you were a Hebrew that followed the creator of heaven and earth. It was just a generic term, but it had become so associated with Satanism that eventually the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. I mean, let's face it. 
In the 1920s, if you were going to parties and you knew a girl that was the life of the party, very happy, lo go lucky, happy go lucky, and very friendly and all that, you know, you might say, oh, she's gay. She's happy. Now, you go to San Francisco and say, oh, he's gay. Um, that's because he goes to bathhouses and plays with uh, anything but women, I guess. I don't know. So, the words, they gain different meanings over time. But B-E-L, when you see B-E-L, uh, that has reference to satanic type stuff. B-E-L and B-A-A-L, uh, it's just an alternate spelling. I mean, how do you spell color? Well, in America, we spell it C-O-L-O-R. But if you went to if you went to the uh, a grade school in the UK, you would be marked as wrong. That's incorrect. That's not how you spell color. C-O-L-O-U-R. Oh yeah. So it's a difference. But when you see B-E-L in a name, you're talking somebody named after their lord. Belshazzar, Jezebel. You ever heard of Jezebel? She was the king of Ahab. And her father was Ethbal. Ethbal? I think it was E T H B A A L. Jezebel. Belshazzar. So keep that in mind. When you're looking at a name, um, and what do they call. What did they call Daniel? They called him, uh, they named Daniel with a, I forget, let me look it up. Oh, okay. In Daniel chapter 10 and verse 1, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. Now, if you don't know what Persia is, Persia, modern day Persia is called Iran. A thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. B-E-L-T-E-S-H-A-Z-Z-A-R. B-A-L. That was his Babylonian name. That's what they called him. When King Nebuchadnezzar called for him, he didn't call him Daniel. He called him Belteshazzar. B-E-L. After the name of... Nebuchadnezzar's God. But, you know, what I find interesting is uh, Nebuchadnezzar wrote the fourth chapter of Daniel. Yeah. So, evidently, he became a believer. So, keep that in mind. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed, and he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So four great beasts come up out of the sea, and they're all different from one another. What is this sea? Hmm, let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation 17. We're going to read this whole chapter. Um, it'll, it, it'll all make sense when we get through with Daniel chapter 7. All right, Revelation 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, that sitteth upon many waters. Now, I did a big Bible study on why Mystery Babylon is not Rome, it's not the USA, it's not New York City, it's not communism, rather it's Jerusalem. 
because she has not been faithful to the Lord. So, the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Symbolism, people. How do you sit on, in, on upon many waters? You, you don't. You don't sit on it. You sink. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, spiritual fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, scarlet colored beast when you read verse 4 the the world will tell you oh that's the catholic church they have all these colors and all these things but what they fail to tell you is all these same things come from the book of leviticus where the levitical priests they had the same setup and the Vatican adopted the same things that the, 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 the Levi priests had in the temple in the days of Herod. <laughs> mm. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Purple was always denoting of royalty. There is a type of shellfish called, I think it's called a murex, M-U-R-E-X. You could read about it. Um, it gave the color purple. Very rare. They thought it was extinct. They found some. And um, if you were caught in Europe wearing purple and you were not uh, related to the king, you could have been executed. Remember when Jesus was being mocked by the Roman soldiers to be, to be put to death? Or was it Herod's people? I forget. They put on him a purple robe. They were mocking him. They put, put a purple robe on him and platted the crown of thorns. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 15. I know I'm jumping all around, but I'm, you know, I got points to make here. Verse 1, and straightway in the morning, the chief priests, these were not Catholics, held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, art thou the king of the Jews? And he, and he Jesus answering, said unto him, thou sayest it, you know, basically, well, if you say so. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he, Jesus, answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast, Passover, he released unto them one prisoner, whosoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he, Pilate, knew that the chief priests had delivered him, Christ, for envy. Yeah. Jesus is healing people and giving sight to the blind and raising the dead uh, to life, back to life, and healing the sick. They were envious of Christ. Pilate knew this. Verse 11, But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I do unto him who ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! Oh, wait a minute. 
But I was taught in my Baptist church that uh, Pilate was the one that killed Jesus. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him! Huh. And so Pilate, willing to contend the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. Uh, here we go. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band, and they clothed him, they, the Roman soldiers, clothed him, Jesus, with purple. With purple. They put on him a purple robe and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. Huh. They mocked him. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. They're mocking him. So, purple. All right. Uh, back to Revelation 17, verse 3. So he carried me away into the wilderness, in, in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, a beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The beast is a kingdom. Seven heads are, you know, you ever heard of, he's a head of this president, or he's head of the country, or he's head of the business, or corporation, and horns. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple, and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup, a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination, abominations of the earth. Oh, yeah. So what's up with this golden cup? In Jeremiah 51, and verse 7, the Lord proclaims Babylon, the kingdom Babylon. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. What did Babylon do? They took Jerusalem and Judah into captivity for 70 years as punishment for what they had done against the Lord. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, <laughs> excuse me. I tried to stop that, but I couldn't do it in time. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Mad as an in insane, not angry. You know, the Lord used Babylon to punish Judah and Jerusalem for their wickedness. And look at America and the West, Europe. Same type of thing is happening for the same exact reasons. And if you don't know about Mystery Babylon the Great, I got a study on it. Write me, I'll send you a link for as long as I'm up. But uh, you know what the holy book of modern day Jerusalem is? It's called the Babylonian, B-A-B-Y-L-O-N-I-A-N. Uh, second word is tall, T-A-L-L. -L. Third, third word is mud, M-U-D. Take the second and third word, put them together, and, and delete an L, and uh, that word means learning. So their holy book is called Babylonian Learning, when you translate it into English. Yeah, that's their holy book, not, not the Bible, no. The Bible's ours, people. So, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored, decked with golden precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand 
full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Who killed the saints in the book of Acts? The Roman Catholic Church? No. Who killed the martyrs of Jesus? Pilate wanted to release Jesus. But, you know, pointing that stuff out will get you kicked out of a Southern Baptist or uh, Independent Baptist church. Or most of the churches. See, they don't want you to know the truth of the Bible. Me? I'm, I'm going to be try to be responsible and truthful because one day I'm going to have to give an account to the Lord of every single word I've ever uttered and it ain't going to be pretty, especially the first half of my life. So, Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. The beast. Let me tell you something. The bottomless pit. Do you know there's going to be a time when Satan is bound in a pit for a thousand years? It's called the millennium. Yeah. Yeah. I suspect that this is what it's talking about. But What does perdition mean? Perdition means the fall. Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. Yeah, he was born to fall. But you can't tell people that. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written, not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that there are people whose names were not written in the book of life from the beginning? Ooh, Chaplain Bob, that sounds like Calvinism. Calvinism is a um, somewhat, they want it to be a derogatory term for election. But let's face it, there are people whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the, of the world, from the beginning. Their names were not written in the book of life. Jesus told the disciples, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas Iscariot. And that's almost a word-for-word -word quote right out of the mouth of Christ. In English, of course. When they beheld the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And they'll point to Rome. Rome's on seven hills. Well, yes it is. But so is Jerusalem. They'll never tell you that. I heard uh, um, Istanbul. Turkey is also on seven hills. Well, guess what? Istanbul used to be called Constantinople. It was the capital of the Eastern Orthodox Church. They must have been really bad for the Lord to allow the Muslims to overrun them. So, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. Now, check this out. And the seven horns, I'm, not, I'm sorry, ten horns, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are... Ten kings. 
See, the Bible explains the Bible if you'll let it. It, does, it only works with uh, the King James that I know of. I, I, it just doesn't work with the other, the modern Bibles. There's a reason why they do this. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. The beast. These shall have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a short, short, very short war. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called, called, and chosen, and faithful. Those with the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus who is the Christ, are called, chosen, and faithful. I think those are the chosen people, not the Antichrist. Verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the waters, the sea, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The beast that rises up out of the sea, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, languages. They're not doing <laughs> Pentecostals. Sorry. Tongues is languages, people. The sea that the beast rises up are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues, languages. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, the kings, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. It doesn't reign over the earth right now. Uh, totally. But it will. Oh, yeah. People, when they build the temple and the false prophet shows up doing miracles, even bringing fire down from the sky and de destroying the enemies of the beast, it's going to be game over. People are going to follow the beast. And all these pre-trib rapture people that think they're not going to be here to see all this stuff. What do you think is going to happen to their lukewarm faith? Oh, Jesus was a false prophet, just like the Jews have been telling us for 2,000 years. They're going to take the Lord. They're going to take the mark of the beast. Trust me. They're going to do it. Well, I can't feed my children if I don't take the mark of the beast. But they're not going to call it the mark of the beast. I, the Lord will understand that i got to feed my children. Because the Lord, they don't have any faith in the Lord to feed it, their children. No. No way. All right, so. Let's go back to Daniel 7. We'll start by verse 2. Daniel 7, verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw my night, vision by night. Behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. They came up from the waters. People, nations, languages, and uh, yeah, you get the idea. Verse 4. And the first was like a lion. Ooh, why a lion? Well, let's take a look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, your adversary the devil, 
as a roaring lion. Huh. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. The first was like a lion, Daniel 7, 4, and had eagle's wings. In other words, a, a eagle has wings, man, it's fast, right? I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. So this beast is going to be, uh, you know, it says he's going to stand upon his feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar the king, Nebuchadnezzar the king, guess who wrote this? Nebuchadnezzar the king wrote this book. Unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God hath wrought toward me. Toward me. See, Nebuchadnezzar wrote this book, this chapter anyways. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house, and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Bel, Belteshazzar, B-E-L, according to the name of my God. See, I told you, Bel, B-E-L, he was named after his God. But da uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a change of heart, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Literally, a change of heart. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods plural, is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw, and behold, a tree, a tree. I did a Bible study on trees, people. It's in the playlist. I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. Think about it, people. The tree of life. And the tree of good and evil, Genesis chapter 3, oh yeah. Verse 11, uh, the tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Babylon was probably the greatest kingdom of all time. I mean, it covered pretty much the whole known earth. I mean, Babylon conquered pretty much everything. 11. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher. What's a watcher? An angel. A watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. Well, obviously men are not up in heaven. And this is a holy one. This is not a satanic angel. They got kicked out. Verse 14. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches and shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. 
Verse 15, Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth. Even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Sometimes a beast has four legs. Sometimes a beast has two legs. Verse 16. Let his heart, let his heart, listen to this carefully. Let his heart be changed from a man's and let a beast heart be given unto him. A beast heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. Now, if you keep reading about this, Nebuchadnezzar, when he was given a beast heart, he was out in the field eating grass like the oxen. And the seven times were seven years. So I guess this is the time when Nebuchadnezzar's son took over, until at least until his father died. So, this matters by decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. You know why we got wicked people in charge of all our countries? The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. What is basis? The worst. We got the worst of the heathen ruling over us right now. Oh, yeah. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. But now, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, forasmuch as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. But thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished. For one hour, and his thoughts troubled him, the king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all under the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven. Verse 20. Go to verse 22. It is thou, O king. Oh, okay. So Nebuchadnezzar is likened unto a tree. Symbolism in the Bible. It is thou, O king, that are grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto, the, unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. Dominion. That's where you get the word domination. It means rulership, power, total dominance. Domination, dominance, dominion. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one come down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. Ah. Why is the roots in the earth? Ah, because it's going to sprout... That Babylonian tree is going to sprout again in the end times. Remember, Babylon took Jerusalem into captivity for 70 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Verse 24. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men... And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, 
till thou know, till you know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Remember, the Lord said he would, they, uh, the watcher said that he would uh, take from him a man's heart and give him a beast's heart. He's going to live like a beast, eating the grass like an oxen. And verse 26, And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and let iniquity and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. Now, if you want to keep reading this, um, Nebuchadnezzar got lifted up in pride and says, Oh, I did all this by my hand. I'm great. I'm smart. And the Lord took away his man's heart and gave him the heart of a beast. And he went out in the field and laid in the grass all night in the rain and the snow and whatever, you know, and was eating grass. Oh, yeah. And then after seven years, the Lord gave him back his heart of a man. And then Nebuchadnezzar was humbled and knew that the Lord God in heaven gave kingdoms to whoever he wants. I mean, even in the book of Exodus, God said he gave Pharaoh power over Israel to make his name and power known unto all the nations. Pharaoh was given power because the Lord gave him that power. But Pharaoh wouldn't humble himself. King uh, Nebuchadnezzar did. King Nebuchadnezzar did. So, all right, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. The first beast, okay, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given unto it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, I don't know, but when I read this, what comes to mind is Soviet Communist Russia. What is their symbol? A bear. And they devoured much flesh. Uh, under Communist Russia for about 100 years, probably more people mass murdered than any other time of history. Especially Christians. But I don't know. Is that the second beast? I don't know. Uh, it's just my, I'm not saying it's true. That's just my observation because I don't claim to be a prophet. So, verse 6. After this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Uh, forgive me, phone call. Verse 6. And after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse. It was different. These Stupid Baptist preachers will tell you, oh, this is Rome, re uh, uh, Rome again. You know, they said Rome was destroyed, but this is uh, Rome coming back together. No. It tells you it was diverse. It was different. 
from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Didn't we read about the ten horns in uh, Revelation? Absolutely. This beast is going to be totally different than all the other beasts. Totally different. And if you look, it had iron teeth. What do teeth do? They chew things. What do wolves do with their teeth? They rip up lambs. Why iron? Iron strong. Iron stronger than teeth, right? Now, if you want to know something, the first recorded usage, well, mention, first recorded mention of iron in the Bible refers to the line of Cain. Yeah, like Cain and Abel, Cain the murderer. The first time iron's mentioned, one of Cain's children was a worker of iron. Hmm. I, I don't think I want to go any further with that, but... Uh, all right, verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes, eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And stupid Jehovah's Witnesses will have a horn with an eye, eyes, and a mouth. Uh, it's symbolism, people. You know, it's like that snake hanging from the apple tree, talking to the Naked woman that they say is Eve, you know. It's, uh. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Great evil, I guess. So, yeah. Verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Who's this ancient of days? It's Christ. Absolutely Christ. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does revelation mean? It means to reveal. People say, oh, I don't understand the book of Revelation. Well, it's because you haven't read the Bible. That's why you don't understand it. The, the book of Revelation, it's uh, all its symbolism comes from the Old Testament. Well, most of it, anyways. So, it means to reveal. It's not a secret. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto the servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto the, his servant John. Um... Do you know that John was the only apostle that didn't die for his faith? According to legend, uh, they tried to kill him and they couldn't do it. So they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. Hmm. So, reveal. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Kings and priests. Uh, you got a group of people that call themselves preterists, and they'll tell you that everything, all the everything happened in the Bible happened in 70 A.D., 
when Rome destroyed the temple? Well, ask him when verse 7 happened. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Uh, every eye. Does that include you? Does that include me? Well, I didn't see him come with the clouds. Did you? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So if this didn't happen, uh, it's got to be future prophecy, right? Yeah. See, all you got to do is read the Bible, and you'll. it's easy to figure out who the liars and deceivers are when you read. But uh, these idiots that go to these so-called churches, buildings, and throw money into a collection plate for a wolf, uh, the wolves that, um, you know, lie to them, they're paid professional liars. Verse 8, Jesus speaking, I am Alpha and Omega. Uh, if you look at the so-called Jewish Bibles, they'll say the Olive and the Tav, which is the first and last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. But it doesn't say that. It says Alpha and Omega. See, the New Testament was written in Greek. Alpha is the letter A. And guess what? That's where you get the word alphabet. Alpha, beta. Beta was the second word in or letter in the Greek alphabet. Alpha, beta. Alphabet. Isn't that funny? So, Greek people. Hebrew roots, Greek fruits. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now this is Christ speaking. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. You know, the Bible condemned Laodicea. Yeah. John condemned Laodicea. Laodiceans didn't like the book of Revelation. They actually said, oh, that doesn't belong in Scripture. That don't belong. Doesn't God know that he's blessed us and given us lots of things because he loves us? Benny Hinn told us. TBN told us. God loves us. That's why he blessed us with all this stuff. We're rich. Uh, Sorry, wrong gospel. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, the Ancient of Days, people, here we go. The Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle, his head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool, not woolly, white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. I used to read that and think he had reddish eyes like an albino. No, I don't think that anymore. Have you ever turned on a gas stove? What color is the flame? Blue. White hair, blue eyes, I think so. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the voice of many waters. Ah. Take a blonde haired, blue eyed surfer guy and put him out in the sun. What what color is his skin? Brass. Oh yeah. So let's go back to Daniel. 
Uh, Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did see, sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Remember uh, in Peter, the book of Peter? It says the earth is going to be devoured in fire. Noah's day, it was a flood of water. And this time it's going to be fire, people. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. What books were opened? The books of life. Well, the book of life and the book of judgment. There's two of them. If your name's not in the book of life, uh, you're in the other one. Yeah. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Ooh. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. What did Jesus always call himself? The Son of Man, right? Came with the clouds of heaven. Wasn't that in Revelation 1? The clouds of heaven. And came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. Dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Oh yeah, when Christ comes back, this is what it's going to be. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Hey, buddy, uh, can you explain all this to me? What's going on? Oh, yeah. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of things. Here we go. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever, even forever and ever. How long is forever and ever? Uh, forever. Verse 19. Listen to this carefully. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse, different from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of fire, iron, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feast. And of the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that speak very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I think this is the false prophet. Verse 21. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, war with the saints, and prevailed against them. This horn is going to have a battle with God's people and prevail. He's going to win, at least until 22. And prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Hmm. Verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall devour the whole earth. Sounds like a United Nations. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. 
And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, the Most High God, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. So this evil one's going to change the calendar, and is going to change the laws. Have you ever heard of the seven laws of Noah? The Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E? From the Ten Commandments to the seven Noahide laws. Think about it. And think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times and the dividing a time. A time is a year, people. Times is two years, and the dividing a time, six months. Uh, now, roughly, the Bible talks about the Great Tribulation being three and a half years, 42 months, or what is it, 1260 or 1290 days, I forget exactly. But it's all talking about the same thing. And maybe I'll cover that in the next study. I don't know. 26. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. This is the beast kingdom. Christ is going to destroy the beast kingdom. Verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogn cognitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. And with that, people, I think I'm going to close this out. Daniel chapter 7. I think this is part 3 of the Horn series, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, we'll cover this again as soon as I get some time. So, uh, so things are not going to be good. This last kingdom, God's going to allow this kingdom to happen because um, it's going to be his punishment upon a wicked people. And a lot of Christians are going to die for their faith and you watch the pre trib rapture crowd, they'll be, uh, they're going to be deceived. Well, they already are. Every preacher that teaches the pre trib rapture as an absolute truth is going to be proven to be a false prophet. The Bible tells you what to do with false prophets. Yeah. You get them stoned, and you're not going to take them to buy some weed. No. No, I did a lot of that when I was a kid, but yeah. You know, I don't mind people teaching the pre-trib rapture. Just don't tell people it's an absolute fact. They should teach all. Some people teach pre, some teach mid, some teach post-tribulation. I believe uh, the Lord teaches that the, he comes back once at the end of the tribulation. So, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, if people are being killed during the tribulation... How can the dead in Christ rise first? Uh, and then people will say, well, you, you believe in God? We're not appointed under wrath. No, we're not appointed under God's wrath if you're in Christ. But we are appointed to the wrath of the beast, the dragon. Yeah. You know, these people just twist. They twist everything. They're evil. So it's the way it goes. All right, um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.